It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. All right, we got a great podcast for you today. We're going to discuss making retirement great again. We're going to break down all the critical things you need to be doing right now to shore up your retirement. We've got some great questions that came in our mailbag. We're going to talk about fees in your portfolio. Are the fees too high? We're going to talk about Roth IRAs, Roth conversions, all these things you can do for taxes. And on our spotlight segment today, we have our CFP, Certified Financial Planner, Michelle McKinnon on the show. She's going to break down a real retirement plan for you, talk about how she helped a couple go from a growth portfolio to a portfolio that generates income for retirement. So stick around. We've got a great show. Bob, the election cycle, it's hard to believe, is right around the corner. So I thought if we were trying to get you elected to the high office of financial advisor, what would your platform consist of? Well, number one, Rai, would be keeping my investors as safe as possible by managing risk. Yes. And I mean, risk is kind of this vague thing, right? Like, I mean, what does it mean to have too much risk, not enough risk? I mean, we hear a lot about risk, but what does that really mean in context of our plan and trying to be prepared for retirement? Well, that's really the problem, Rai. You know, we talked about it a couple of times. Uh, over the over the course of the year, most of the people in the financial services industry have you take a test, right? Answer six questions yes. on how you feel about risk. And let's be honest about that test. Depending on the day, if the market's doing really, really well, you're making a lot of money, you're probably feeling more aggressive about risk. But on the flip side, if it's like 2008, the markets are selling off, it's doom and gloom, you're probably not feeling so good about risk. So it's kind of an unreliable way to determine what kind of risk you should have in your portfolio. Yeah, it's not even that. It's it's also the meaning of risk. You know, the meaning conveyed by risk, you know, varies among people. Some for some of you it's um don't want to lose what I have, right? For others it's I didn't make what I could have. So does it make any kind of sense, Rye, for you to set your lifetime investment strategy based on six questions you answered on some day where you vaguely understood how you felt about risk? Yeah. No, no. It's actually a crazy way to do it. And we talk about this all the time, Bob, having a goal-based retirement plan. The real way to evaluate risk in your portfolio is determine what your goals are and determine how much growth you actually need on your portfolio. And that'll determine what we would call the right amount of risk, right? Not too little, not too much, but the right amount of risk in your portfolio. That's what you're shooting for. Well, you know, Rod, why we do that, and that, that would be the second plank of my platform, eliminating yeah. the fear that investors have of running out of money. Yes. I mean, everyone who comes into our office, their biggest fear is, I'm going to retire soon. I'm retired now. The paycheck is stopping. And my biggest fear is, Bob, that my portfolio is just not going to last. That is a huge fear. Yeah. It's like, am I taking too much risk or not enough risk? What happens if we have another 2008? You know, what happens if I have unexpected expenses? And the thing is, it's so simple to resolve that issue. Right. I mean, what you have to do is you tangibly have to look at, again, what are you going to need in expenses? What's inflation going to look like? Cost of living is going to go up. What do taxes look like? And Bob, there's a lot of things you can do to tweak your portfolio to create more certainty. Yeah, but more importantly, Rai, did you go see a doctor in the last 12 months to get a physical? I did. I like clockwork every 12 months. Yeah. Now, how many of you out there sat down with your financial advisor and did your financial checkup? You need to do a checkup every single year. Yeah, exactly right. You know, the worst thing you can do, Bob, when it comes to your financial plan is set it and forget it. Things are going to change. Your lifestyle changes. Market conditions change. Uh, everything changes. And if you're not regularly looking at your portfolio, looking at what you need to spend and making sure that things are up to snuff, that's a real big red flag. Yeah. You don't want to sit there worrying every night because it's your advisor's words against your fear. You want to have a written document, a projection that shows you know, net of inflation, net of taxes based on how you're invested, based on your income streams, your passive income from Social Security and pension that you're set for life. And you want to be able to see that every year because things do change and there are nuances and you want to have it, a written document in front of you every year. And if you don't, it's time to make a phone call and get that done. Yeah. The other thing, Bob, I think on your platform to get you elected to that high office of financial advising is you really need to unite the different elements of a portfolio by helping different pieces work together in harmony. It's so key that all your investments are working in concert. 
You know, I often say you should have every dollar managed in concert with every dollar you have. You can't just manage money in a vacuum. It's important on how you title those assets. Don't you agree? It is because you know there's a lot of little nuances that can really what we would call supercharge your portfolio, like your aggressive investments. Maybe they should be in your retirement accounts where they have tax advantages. If you have tax-free bonds, they're better placed in a taxable account where they'll avoid taxes. By making sure everything's working together, Bob, and you're placing things on the right account can have a huge impact on your portfolio. And like you always say, it's not really about the money you make, but it's really about what you put in your pocket after taxes. And by having everything work together, you can really optimize that. Yeah. So titling thing can save you money on taxes. It can give you additional money to compound. It can reduce your overall cost. But uh, you know, also, Rai, it's about you know what you own, right? not just why you own it. Take stocks, for example. I don't know if you noticed, but they were down big on Monday. Oh, I did. <laughs> but you may not have noticed that your bond portfolio and your real estate investment trust went up dramatically. So you had one part of your portfolio dropping while another part of your portfolio went up. That's true diversification. Yeah. And the other thing too is talking about eliminating risk, creating more certainty in your portfolio. I mean, Monday is a great example of that. The market went down huge. But if you have a portfolio that's generating a lot of current income, because to me, the key is if you know the income you have coming in every year, you don't really have to worry as much about the ups and downs of the market. Because if you build your portfolio correctly, Bob, you know you can essentially build it so that the income coming in every year is covering those expenses. So you're not worried about is the market up today, down today. Yeah, right. The only thing you had to think about on Monday, if you're invested properly, is am I selling or buying today? If I'm not doing either, eh, let me go play some golf. Hey, that sounds like your, uh, your fantasy financial plan, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> but I cannot disagree with you on that point. <laughs> I know you anything with golf involved, I agree. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our total financial master plan. It's a full holistic review when we look at the whole picture for you. Simply bring those statements in for July. They're probably already in the mail. Print them off the computer, bring them in the office. We're going to take all that information and we're going to build you your own personalized financial portal so we can take a look at your whole financial life in a bird's eye view in one place and look at all the critical components. We're going to look at everything from diversification. Market sold off big on Monday. Were you protected? How do you protect your money in retirement? We're going to show you how to bulletproof your portfolio and manage the risk correctly. We're going to look at fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in your portfolio you don't know you're paying. Bob and I are going to show you how to reduce costs so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. And we're going to look at taxes. There's a lot of ways to optimize your portfolio for taxes so there's more money going into your pocket. And lastly, we're going to look at income. Income is so critical for retirement. When you need to replace that paycheck, do you have enough income coming in that you cannot live? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio so you're not relying on the ups and downs of the market. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, and we're going to determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies our family has literally worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan. Or visit our website, thebullish.com or paincm.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text 844-752-6692. 6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply click the Get Started button on BeBullish.com. It's time for the mailbag. We want to hear from you. If you ever have a question you want to ask myself and Bob, you can email us, questions at BeBullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. If it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And to help us, we're going old school with our first producer. Mr. John Stillman is with us today to answer some questions. Great to have you, John. It's been way too long, man. Yeah, back from the graveyard. But uh, good to be back with you guys here on the show. Uh, We're going to start out today with Claire. 
Claire is in Paramus, New Jersey, and she says, Bob, she specifically wants to know from Bob. No, no offense, right? Uh, Bob, hurt. should I move my IRA away from a place that charges a two and a half percent fee? That seems extremely high to me, and I'm not sure how to tell if I'm getting my money's worth. What do you think? Well, I'll tell you what, that is a, uh, an incredible fee. And the problem I think uh, we have here is that uh, that's probably not the total cost. You know, a lot of times when you have a, a brokerage account uh, or a, an account at an insurance company, you see the fee that they're charging, right? That's right on your statement. But there's also internal cost of the investments you own. Chances are, Claire, there's uh, probably an additional one to one and a half percent that you're paying. And at 4% a year, there's no way for you to make money. I mean, how often do you see this, Ry? Um, we see it a lot. And that's what I love about that uh, fee x-ray we put together. Because to your point, Bob, there's always two parts to that fee. There's the part that you can see, and we always say that the devil you can't see is usually worse than the devil that you do see, those internal costs which really get you. And we, I mean, we see this on annuities all the time. I mean, I worked with a potential client the other week, and they had like two and a half, three and a half percent fees on these annuities, had no idea they were paying that. I mean, when you added it up, Bob, it was like twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year in hidden costs. They had no idea they were paying. That's crazy money when you get down to it. Yeah, see, that's a, that's a, a big problem that I see for all of you. Um, you have an account that you opened up 15, 20, 30 years ago, and yeah, you like the people, and they've been fair to you, or they've been nice to you. But you know, no one's ever addressed the fee issue, and fees have compressed. You know, margins are less, and you should be getting a discount. You know, prior to what you were paying years and years before. I see this all the time, right? We met with a new client this week. And first thing she said to me, it's like, ah, you know, I don't really worry about the fees that much. You know, I've been working with these people for a long time. But then when we did the fee x-ray and then we did the wealth projection and it turned out in 20 years, they'd have an additional half a million dollars, $500,000 just by simply reducing the fees in line with where the market is today. Suddenly, that, that got her attention. Yeah, we also talk about this all the time too, Bob, is we usually overcharge ourselves because we think we're being so diversified because I have my 401k over here. I have an IRA here with one broker, and then I have another friend of the family who's managing my brokerage account over here. And the reality of it is you're getting charged premium prices because you have smaller amounts with different people. Whereas if you just consolidate all that money into one plan, you're going to be entitled to a bigger discount on having your money managed. And that's like half the game there is running your money at a relatively inexpensive cost. You know where the biggest problems are, Rye, in portfolios today? Where's that? With those weapons of mass portfolio destruction, bond funds. <laughs> when you look at the fee that the advisor's charging and then the internal fees of the mutual fund company, you have a yield that's less than your cost. So you have a negative yield investment, even though you're not even buying negative yield bonds. And who knows, most likely that bond fund is buying negative yield bonds today. It's crazy. And that's why you need to know these things. You need to really find out all the costs within your portfolio. And odds are you're just not seeing it. All right. Uh, we'll bring up the next one in the mailbag here. This is Doug in Rye, New York, who says, Ryan, so just to clarify, this is a question for Rye coming from Doug in Rye. <laughs> uh, Ryan, I just got a raise at work which is great. Only downside is that now I make too much to put money into my Roth this year. I liked having that tax-free growth in the Roth, but now that it's off the table, where should I invest that money instead? Oh my God. I love this question, Doug, because money saved in taxes, you've heard me say it a gazillion times, is just as green as any money can make invested. I love Roth IRAs, and there are thresholds to put money into a Roth IRA. And a Roth IRA simply is an account where that money not only grows tax-free over your lifetime, but you can take all the growth out without paying taxes on it, which is awesome. And this is the great thing. Depending on your situation, even though you make too much money to contribute, there are ways you still might be able to contribute to that Roth. There is a tax loophole there. And that's what I just love about planning, Bob, is coming up with all these creative tax strategies that are completely legal, by the way. I just want to put that in there. Well, you know, that's what I love about uh, having an advisor, Rye. You're my advisor. And it's something that you pointed out to me years ago, that uh, not only could I max out my contribution to my retirement plan, but I could also put money into an IRA and immediately convert it to a Roth IRA, something that you told me was called a backdoor IRA. Now, I'm an advisor. been doing this for 45 years. It never occurred to me because I was focused on helping my clients. You know, I'm the shoemaker without shoes. That's why you need a financial advisor 
to fill you in on what you don't know because simply you don't know what you don't know and it can cost you a lot. And luckily, Bob, you do have the best advisor, but the listeners already knew that. But just to clarify there too, you, you know, there are some nuances there to do that. Don't do this without talking to a tax professional first because there are some things you have to square away to do what we call backdoor Roth. But that's just one of many strategies. And that's really why you want to look at all of your accounts on a concerted effort. Because when you're looking at that bird's eye view, there's so many little things you can do to tweak your portfolio for taxes. And again, it's not what you make. It's what you put in your pocket. Tax efficiency is a huge part of your retirement plan. You've got to optimize it. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free and you can download it right now by texting the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. 888, or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Here's this week's spotlight on no pain, no gain. And now we have a very special guest on the show and a rare guest that we're getting on the show more often these days, which I am personally honored. Trying to make time for you guys. <laughs> I know. I'm, believe me. I am, uh, I'm feeling the love, Michelle. Uh, Michelle McKinnon, certified financial planner. My colleague, Bob's colleague, is on the show this morning for our Spotlight segment where we dissect a real financial plan and uncover the flaws or what we call pain points. That's P-A-Y-N-E. So you can avoid the same mistakes with your planning and investing. Michelle, why don't you give us the rundown today and uh, we'll take it from there. Yeah, so I met with a really nice couple. Actually only met with the man and this is kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this on the show. He came in, they're about to retire and one of his main points was he really wanted to get his wife involved. He was suffering from a little bit of a health scare and was just nervous that you know he does all the investing now, he runs the portfolio. But what was to happen if he wasn't going to be there anymore, Ryan. Which is just so, so common. We see it all the time. And it's, you know, frankly, a disaster when you have one spouse who handles the finances, the other spouse is in the dark, and no proactive steps are made to make sure that the other spouse is involved. So I give kudos to him for realizing that this is a big problem that needs to be addressed. Yes, yes. And we, and like you said, we see it all the time where a prospective client will come in and unfortunately the the mother or the spouse had no idea where anything was and the son had to step in as power of attorney and we had to figure it all out. So yes. it's much better when the spouse can at least know where things are. She doesn't necessarily have to be involved in the day-to-day conversation, but she needs to know where the accounts are, Ryan. Yeah, absolutely. So that was a really big point. Um, diversification. So it looks very comparable to the portfolios that we see all the time. Very heavy and large cap growth and value, the S&P 500, and um, not a lot of income being generated. And um, they had a pretty big income gap, meaning you know, they've got Social Security coming in, but their expenses are much bigger than what Social Security is going to bring in, Ryan. And that, you know, that's a good point, Bob. You probably want to chime in here too, is what we find is it's crazy. You're getting close to retirement. Like how old is this couple right now? And they're like mid-60s. Mid-60s. And they have a growth portfolio. And at some point you need to generate income and growth is not that reliable, Bob, last time I checked. All right. You know, you have better outcomes with more income as your brother Chris likes to say. And you know, I think the beauty of this analysis that Michelle uh, put together is you're able to look back and see what if, you know, what if we have, you know, another bear market like we did in 2008 and 2000, you know, what would the outcome be of the same portfolio? Because the result's going to be the same. And, you know, how are they going to act towards that? Now, the last time we had that kind of decline, Michelle, they're a lot younger. They can handle it. When you're 65, you don't have time to recover, right? You don't have time to, you know, hope and pray that it comes back in time for you, you know, to get invested properly. So it's like um, not only just what you did for the spouse, it's just what you did for him as well. Yeah, and really I want to kind of talk about our e-money portal because this is really where I think the spouse 
can be involved. And that's our portal where we have all the accounts all in one place. And I was showing him this and it, it was just you could see how he's like, oh, like my wife could actually log in and see all this. And yes. she doesn't need to see all these different <laughs> statements and have all these different folders. And the man was very organized. So I had to give it to him there. But, you know, to just literally all she would need is a login and then all the accounts would be right there. Um, I like that you call today. You know, Michelle, you have so many accounts with so many different passwords. When the person who owns a password passes away, boy, it's a problem. Oh, right. it's a disaster. And we've seen it before. So, and I remember, Michelle, we, you, you were talking about a, a client that we had worked with whose son had to get involved. They had a POA and they were finding like insurance policies and shoe boxes. And it was, it was just crazy. crazy. Accounts overseas. Yeah. Luckily, they're all together now. <laughs> <laughs> but it took a lot of time. Think and I think that's the thing to be proactive about. Think about all those assets wasting away in safety deposit boxes that uh, a spouse never told the other spouse about. Right, right. So true. And then just looking at the portfolio, Michelle, like, you know, what other things did you proactively hear? Because obviously moving from a growth portfolio to an income portfolio they can live on is is a key thing here. You know, what else did you find? Yeah, I would say expenses. And something that I highlighted was I was surprised at how high one of the expenses were in the 401k because it looks like there's some type of like advisory expense. So not only did this this client have fees for the actual funds that they were using, but then there was this advisory fee that looked pretty high and, and I pointed it out to him and he was like, wow, I didn't even know I had an advisor on the plant. So, <laughs> you know, this is a case that, you know, he actually had an advisor on the 401k. He's actually paying a, re- a pretty high fee and he's not using it. So again, these types of you know, running the numbers and actually looking at the details, you, you'll be surprised what you find sometimes. Yeah, I just love this industry. It's like, hey, some advisor can slap a fee on, do no work, get paid in perpetuity just because you're not taking the time to understand what's going on with your account. And that's why it's so important that you need to know. You need to know the expenses. You need to know where everything is. And to your point, that 360 portal is just awesome because it's like you can tally everything up and you can take that bird's eye view and really get an idea of like how everything's working. And in this case, not working. Exactly. You know, but Michelle, besides the expenses, I mean, when you're able to reposition the portfolio into more income, total return portfolio, how much more income are we actually talking about? Yeah, pretty substantial. So it's at least a $20,000 bump up. And, you know, that could be $20,000 of just expenses that you now have that you now can use. And when we say income, right, I think this is really important. Yeah. We're not talking about taking principal. We're literally just talking about taking income from the portfolio, just like a rental property, right? You're not selling your rental property, but you're living off of the rent. Yes. Yeah, because like on a day-to-day basis, if you own a rental property, you're not worried if the price is up or down. You know you're collecting your rental check, and that's... Th- how you design a great portfolio. It's like you're not worried about the ups and downs. You know day one what income's coming in throughout the year, and that just creates so much certainty in life, especially when you're getting close to and retired. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well played, Michelle. Thank you. You know, to find time out of your busy Fox Business, CNBC, uh, Yahoo Finance, and Hamptons Weekends, it's <laughs> <laughs> the list goes on. We all could be like Michelle. The things we've talked about on today's show should illustrate for you just how important it is to have a clear financial plan. Our job is to make your plan robust and to help you navigate through the sometimes hard to understand financial landscape. That is why we created the Total Financial Master Plan for our podcast listeners. We know it would be helpful to you, so we're offering you an absolutely free consultation as a thank you for listening to the show. Here's what the Total Financial Master Plan entails. It's like a full holistic review where we're going to look at the big picture. Just bring those statements in. July statements should be in. Bring them in the office. We're going to take all that data and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal, our 360 portal. And we're going to get a bird's eye view of everything. We're going to look at all those critical components. We're going to look at income. You need to generate income in retirement. How are you going to do it? We're going to show you how to optimize the income on your portfolio, not be reliant on the ups and downs of the market. We're going to look at diversification. Are you protected in retirement? What underlying risks do you have? You don't even know you have. We're going to point it out and show you how to bulletproof your portfolio. We're going to look at taxes. How can you tweak and optimize your portfolio in taxes? Money saved in taxes is just as green as any money you can make invested. And we're going to look at all those hidden portfolio fees and those 401ks, annuities. We're going to show you how to reduce them so there's more money in your pocket. Tie it all together into one total financial master plan. And we're going to figure out the age-old question, are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now we have worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B? 
with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan. Or visit our website, bebullish.com or paincm.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply click the Get Started button on bebullish.com. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting bebullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.